sponsored by Tech Reload UK. Check out the purchasing links in the description below. These three parcels are for the next series in my YouTube videos, unboxing Amazon parcels. But before I show you this, you need to like my video and subscribe. So now it's okay? There's just one more thing you need to do and that is to click on the bell uh, so that you get a notification when a new video comes out. I hope it's okay. Perfect. There should be four items here according to the delivery status. So I'm assuming the bottom box has two items in there. These two are similar sized. This one's a little bit fatter and heavier. It's branded Releon. Never heard of that branding before. They have a website. It's made in China and it tells you it's a power bank. At the bottom is a instruction book. If you need to use an instruction book, it means it's designed badly. It is the Express One model and it's 2,500 milliamp hours. The input is 5 volts, 2.4 amps, and the output is also 5 volts, 2.4 amps. We have a micro USB connector on this side and a Type C. We have three USB ports. I've switched it on using this button here and it says 70%. We also have three LEDs on the bottom. Normally you have the LEDs on this side here, but because there's three USB ports, we won't have that. There's one slight problem. My USB power monitor is displayed on this side, which is the opposite side to the display on this device. When I attach a device to the USB monitor, it tells you which output is in use. I don't seem to be getting the 2.4 amps out of the USB connection. The phone does need charging, it's at 29%. Swapping the USB cable, I also get the same rating. It can charge the power bank up at one amp, but that might be because it's already at 70%. It'll probably be higher if the battery is a bit lower than this. I've just located my other USB monitor, or charge adapter, and that also says 0.4 amps. It could be a problem with my phone. I use my Samsung charger, I get about 1.8 amps. Get the camera, it's drawing 0.9 amps. The next parcel, I have a W10 heart rate and blood pressure smart wristband. It can measure blood pressure, heart rate, calories, steps. It says reminder, but it looks like somebody sat on a toilet. It can do phone calls and possibly monitor your sleep. It has a 120 milliamp hour battery, which is tiny. It has a service time of six days. I think from the website I saw it can last up to 10 days, but I'm assuming that's if you don't use it. It charges at 100 milliamps at five volts. It supports Bluetooth version 4.0, and it can work down to temperatures of 10 Celsius all the way up to 45 degrees Celsius. It says the working frequency is 2.4 to about 2.48 gigahertz. It's measured in megahertz and I've just converted it up. And this is it. Looks like it has the reception logo. It tells you if it's AM, PM. There's another icon there. Battery status. Two sets of two digits. That could be the date and the day of the week. It comes with a screen protector. When applying screen protectors, it's better to do this outside and when the phone or device is brand new. It looks like it has two LEDs on the side and some kind of sensor there. And there's two connections on this side here. Nothing on that side. The user guide is underneath everything. So I'm guessing this is where you plug it into. Like that. So the first thing I'm going to do, put the screen protector on. There's a number one on this side and number two on this side. It doesn't come with a cloth but you can use any cloth. So give that a quick clean. Okay, that's now on, kind of. It looks like it can only go in one way. I think that needs a charge. It shows you a battery icon on this side, so that would go on this side here. So I'll give that a charge. I've been testing the watch for a while. You press the button to turn it on. The time is in Chinese format. Press it again, you got sports mode. You long press on that for about three seconds and it'll have a timer on there, the number of steps, calories, heart rate, and distance. With the heart rate mode, you can see two green LEDs and these blink really fast. It takes a few seconds, but then it does measure your heart rate, so that's saying, 113 beats per minute there's a pause and an exit so you do a long press to go exit out of sports mode the next mode is the pedometer so since we're in this i've done 550 steps and about half a kilometer and that's the energy and that's how many calories i burn 33 the next mode is a blood pressure mode it takes a few moments you can see the green leds so i'm 141 over 94 and it says mmhg so that's millimeters mercury I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing the next mode is a heart rate again you just leave it running for a while so my heart rate is about 110 beats per minute i have been running up and down the stairs and it did jump up to 140 beats per minute the heart rate monitor and the blood pressure monitor are only for a short moment in time if you want it to be continuous you need to be in sports mode and then it can also tell you how long you've been sleeping for and then long press to turn it off there are other features which require you to have an app the name of that app is called hband i'm just going to create an account we can see here when i try to sign up it says network is unavailable please check network status so their servers might be down at the moment 
moment. I did try to see if I can create an account using the web page, but I couldn't see that option. So you pick your skin colour, probably that one. The date of birth is in Chinese format, so it's year, month, then day. Last time I checked, I was 58 kilos and 155 centimeters. Here you can set your daily step goal. On average, 10,000 steps is what you need to do a day. If you're really fit, then it should be 20,000 steps. You can specify how many hours you should have sleeping. So I need to connect this up, and we can see a list of Bluetooth devices. It might be a certain type of Bluetooth device. So we can see the W10, the MAC address, and 61, which seems to be the signal strength. Okay, so that says I've done zero steps today, which isn't correct. You can change the units, shows you the battery status. You can turn on notifications. So if you get a missed call or something like that, phone calls, SMS, WeChat if you're in China, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Line, and Instagram, and all the others. You can even add custom apps. You can have different reminders, like when to take your pills, when to go shopping. So let's see what happens if I set an alarm in one minute's time. That's now set. That woke up it by itself and the time had changed. So it does turn on without you having to press anything, which is good. I've just noticed that now. So the moment I connected this up, it updated the time without doing anything. You can set up heart rate alarm. It also vibrates. Obviously with it vibrating, it's going to drain quite a lot of battery. So we've got turn the wrist switched on. So that only started working when the app was connected. It didn't work before this. You can make blood pressure in private mode, whatever that means. You can enable stopwatch function. So my heart rate has gone up. You can add a countdown timer. So if your heart rate gets up to 150 beats per minute, that's when the alarm goes off. So there's no point in actually doing a test call because we know what it's going to be similar to the alarm. It'll just change the icon. Plus I can't make a call and film at the same time. It doesn't seem to log your heart rate or blood pressure in the app. Okay, my blood pressure has changed slightly. It's 137 over 91. Still have no idea what that means. And the final parcel. There are two items. What are the three items? Okay, these Amazon items, including the two before, were meant to arrive tomorrow, so they arrived day early. The first item is a Wi-Fi smart power plug. It says remote controlling, charging protection, timing switch, more application. It has its own app called In Broadlink. So this is a Wi-Fi plug, rated at 10 amps. That app is called Broadlink E-Control. This Wi-Fi plug only works on 2.4 gigahertz. doesn't work on 5 gigahertz. When you've got a plug plugged in, you can't really see the LED. Next, you need to download an app to make it work with Alexa, which is intelligent home center we need to add a remote somewhere. this light here is also a button the noise that you can hear in the background is power supply so i know if it's turned it on but you can also hear a relay click i need to long press the power switch it's now solid or it was you'll see the wi-fi details on the screen it's broad link rov once you connected it asks you for the house wi-fi details i've given up trying to pair this i can get it working if i connect to this in local mode but that's no good if i want to access it through the internet or if i want to have access to the internet on my phone when i put this into ap mode it can sometimes see a wi-fi signal but only one and it's not the right one that i want to connect it to i've gone closer to the router and that doesn't help i've tried to switch off other ssids that doesn't help either i'm just going to have a quick look inside so there's a screw there and then i've just got a knife in there to bias that open. It is possible to flip this around, but then it won't line up with these metal pins. There seems to be some kind of fuse here. It could be a resistor, or it could be just a mini fuse, which has each shrink around it. So if it does shatter, it won't go everywhere. They're not too isolated there. A relay, which is rated at 10 amps at 125 volts. It does also say 10 amps at 277 volts. So it is dual voltage. Here we've got the red, blue LED and switch. So the LEDs are here at the bottom and top. There's a header here. I'm not sure what that's for. There's a regulator there. I don't have my miniature screwdriver set, so I'm not going to be able to take this circuit board out. The tracks are quite wide, but I can't see if there's any solder underneath. The next item is the LED puck lights. You get six and a half. It's 60 lumens with a colour ratio index of 80. The closer to 100, the better it is. So this wouldn't be ideal for filming. CTT 4000. So is that the colour temperature? If so, the light is quite warm. At the top, you've got your instructions. You've got six foam discs, double-sided foam discs. You have two remote controls, so one is a spare. And you have the six hooks, just under two and a half inches. That's what it looks like. It says and fire on the front. And we have the little button here which you can press to install the battery you unscrew the rear like that and i need some batteries the triple a batteries and i don't have many batteries so i'm gonna borrow them out of my thermostat So each LED light requires three batteries. Looking inside here, there are two IR sensors, black little objects. That's on, that's off. Remote control has a little plastic thing and a lithium cell battery. It's a CR2025. There are 12 buttons. Top section is on and off. Next section is brightness control. Then we have light colors and then finally timer controls. So on and off is just very simple. We also have brightness. So I assume that's full brightness and we can dim it down, which isn't showing up on camera that much. Next we have the four different colors. So it's currently on white. We've got red, blue, green, 
screen come back to white again so looking at the pattern of the leds which you can't see on camera the leds are in different positions they're not proper rgb leds in the timer section we've got a button called 16 colors red green blue white orange yeah and the others which isn't showing up well so let me see if i can fix that you kind of see what's going on there the next option is flash which flashes through all the colors you have fade which fades through all the colors and there's a 120 minute button on here which probably keeps it on for two hours when you have all these mounted they should all work at the same time if you're pointing to the same direction otherwise you have to repeat the command again so for the fading you probably wouldn't get them timed and the internal clocks will not be lined up anyway so they'll go out of sync over time which is annoying feature of any kind of rgb leds i was just packing everything up and there's actually seven double-sided foam discs and the final parcel it says on there the brand name upgraded led solar driveway pool area desk we have a stake for sticking in the ground instructions at the bottom the floodlight area has a reflector on there and four LEDs. It'd be nice to see what kind of LEDs they are. There's a large solar panel here and it's supposed to have a lithium ion 18650 battery. It's a 3.7 volt 200 milliamp hour battery. So that will last a very long time. It's good quality battery as in the battery technology. It comes with three screws and three wall plugs for mounting here. We've got a power button here, two tightening things. So that could either go into the ground like that or you can wall mount it. Looking at the functions you should have 100%, 60%, 30%, SOS and flash light put that face down it's currently off that's on off that's strobing off again now it's in sos mode no idea why you would want that off back on again so that must be full brightness let's switch the lights off that's strobing sos that must be the brightest yeah that's definitely dimmer and that's 30 percent and when it's sunny it will turn off and start charging there we go. so let's have a look inside we have four phillips screws this is supposed to be ip rated I can see why it's good to have different brightness control because in winter you don't get much sun and if you want this to last long then you don't want it to be on full brightness. Okay, so the cell is glued to the lid, which is very strange. The, just going to check if there's any markings on the cell. So it's an IRC18650, 3.7 volts, and that's 7.4 watt hours, which is 2000 milliamp hours. We have a chip here, which has got some kind of conformal coating on there to stop it from corroding, so that's a good thing. But it also starts me from reading the chip number on there. The coating is kind of light on this side, it could do with a bit more, but the rest of it is covered quite well. It could be a standard bike chip, and that's why you got the SOS and the different brightness mode and then it's got additional circuits to stop it from working when the solar panel is on so I'll pull that back in as for the waterproofing this part here is a bit recessed so the only way water can get in is if it goes in this way and then somehow upwards which shouldn't happen unless if it was installed this way around so water shouldn't be able to get in but looking at the edge where the solar panel is there is a gap there which could have water coming in top of the screws there is a rubber edge around the glass, so that's good. That will stop moisture from getting through. The reflector does have some fingerprints on there. Obviously, they're not my fingerprints because I have gloves on. I can't pull the circuit board out because it's soldered in. So they appear to be large 8mm LEDs. That looks like 8mm, it's not 10mm. Unusual LEDs, but it's just normal. Nothing special about it. When putting it back in, there's a little cut out here, so that needs to line up. Don't over tighten it, and that's it. I'll just show what it will look like outside in the dark. And this is what it looks like at night on full brightness. The beam I'm going isn't that big. It's good at illuminating only a small section. The disadvantage to this light is it doesn't have a PIR, so that means it's going to be on all night. And you can't mount this at a funny angle. You can't have the solar panel facing one way and the light facing. If you've liked this video and found anything useful, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't done already, please subscribe and click on the bell for more notifications. And could you also like my Facebook page? And I'll see you next time.